Urgot and Maokai are two big bands for Fnatic coming into this one. And we're ready to go. We are about to get into the picks and bands here to start off the first ever, ever mid-season Invitational. Fnatic versus Team Solo Mid. As we heard, TSM would be playing three games today, all on the red side, so they can prepare for these last pick instances. Yeah, and again, there's those top lane bands that we were talking about. Always, Marvel right? Hecarim is the most banned champion against Fnatic in recent weeks. 12th consecutive ban that we've seen this. Huni wants his hands, he's not going to get it. Yeah, and this is the biggest stylistic mismatch we've seen between these teams, is the way the top laners play between Dyrus and Huni. Dyrus, incredibly low kill share for his team. Incredibly low damage dealt to champions because Huni is a damaged top laner. Dyrus is more of a guy who stays on an island and supports his team. And five top lane bans <laughs> thus far. Yeah, and something we do have to highlight. Sejuani open, Gragas open. As far as junglers are concerned, Rainover is a big component in getting Huni going or Feverven in certain cases. Six and top lane bans. These guys are going to get the pick of the litter. Wow. So here's the great thing. In the playoffs, when people were triple banning Huni, the third ban was actually Shivana. He had some bad games on Smite Lee Sin. Th this pick ban phase is going a little too fast, but I I'm going to finish this up. Smite Lee Sin, then he had wins on Vladimir, but it wasn't because of Vladimir. Also in the European playoffs, Urgot was a complete non-factor, yet it was Bjergsen's most played since the Cinderhawk patch, and Fnatic take it away. The only team that played the Urgot was Gambit, and they fell at the first hurdle right. against Unicorns of Love. This is something we have not seen Fnatic do, and as a team, we keep talking about that relative you know, mid-game power, mid-game aggressive style. We need to see if they can make Urgot fit the Fnatic playstyle, or maybe they're going to play something completely different here on the international stage. Very interesting to see where, the, where they will even put this. NAEU, when they do play Urgot, it's in that mid lane position. Not like other regions where Deft has been playing an AD carry oh, and man. others as well. The NAR gets picked up. I was wondering if we would see this. Neither Fnatic, neither Dyrus or Huni really went at this this season. This is what happens when you have six top lane bands. We've also seen NAR have a huge resurgence in both the LPL and the LCK. We know that NAR is going to be a big pick Absolutely. at the MSI right here, so it doesn't it's not that surprising that either Dyrus or Huni will have played and practiced a lot of NAR. It is within their capability yep. to play. It just was not one of their picks during their regional playoffs. Take away of the Rek'Sai from Rain over here, his early game pressure. See what he tries to get that back in the game with. And something I have to highlight, Fnatic won the first couple of weeks worth of games by comboing great pick potential from Rain over on Rengar, plus some sniping power from Febivit with uh, a number of champions available, and all the bands. Huni also played a lot of Lissandra. We've got to keep that in mind. We need to see how deep his champion pool goes. If he goes Shivan or that Lee Sin, that Lee Sin did not work out very well during the uh, semifinals. Yeah, and this pick band phase, Fnatic actually showed their hands pretty early here, and I think it's because they were afraid of Bjergsen playing the block just straight off. So Urgot is that flex pick that can go in the mid lane or as an AD carry. Yep. If TSM would have picked Urgot, it would not have been a flex pick because Wild Turtle does not like playing Urgot. But now it's actually going to be Steelback on that. We were expecting Steelback to have a high priority on Sivir Both of this guys, game yeah. because he can press the R button and be successful. But now as far as the laning phase goes, they're going to be kind of more okay. And Urgot's a different type of AD carry champion that I think Steelback will be able to execute. Well, we'll need to see how Febivin does in that LeBlanc. Three and two since 5.5 was implemented. It does have pick potential and some squishies on TSM, but it feels like TSM has got that mid-game team fight yep. set up already with the Sivir, with not with Rek'Sai, and we'll need to see if uh, Fnatic can play for the mid to late. The problem is, when Fnatic go mid to late, they lose. Yeah, it, almost, it seems like a little bit of an arms race right now as far as mid-game team fighting goes. Fnatic's last two picks really have to cement their team composition right here. With seven top laners already off the board, Huni's getting heavily stretched right now uh, for his top lane champion, especially since he has to go up against Nar. Whoa. Huh? It's potentially a top lane Cassiopeia from Huni right now, which- Wouldn't doubt it. That's not something you prep for. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest right now. Yet it, it could it could be either, it could be the LeBlanc or the Cassiopeia. The Cassiopeia is much more likely but holy crap. I feel like they banned everything and then took everything TSM would want to <laughs> play in this game and said, that's the deal. We'll get everything off the board. Wow. Still looking in this, as they were saying, Crumbs 
mentioning TSM getting the red side. This is where Bjergsen can now counter the pick, counter the entire composition if he wants to. So far, Azir and Kassin are being hovered. Well, we'll see what they decide to lock in. I just want to hit home for Fnatic. This is completely changing the rules. With Urgot, Cassio, and LeBlanc, this is the first time they've played that combination ever. And it's the first time that they've done that in recent weeks. This is a completely different flavor that Fnatic's been putting out, but they have had a little bit of time to play with. This is so wild. Sejuani and Grok, Sejuani goes completely through the pick ban phase. TSM goes yeah. for a mid-game power spike focused team right here. They're gonna have to win this one early, I feel like, because Huni with the damage heavy top laner there in Cassiopeia will have a great late game edge, but it, it kind of takes away from Huni's mid game impact yeah. already. This is, it's very strange. And we need to see if they can handle that Cho'Gath. Both Huni and Febivan have respectively played Cho'Gath in the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to be frank, they sucked with it. They did not make it work. However, Bjergsen against High in the finals, he had a great performance. When we're using him like an assassinator, right? Just going around, flashing over wall, bite, chomp, take High down in a second. If he gets going like that once again with early pressure from Santorin on Rek'Sai, could yeah. be big. Both games that Bjergsen's had on Shogath, he has absolutely decimated the laning phase. Yeah. They lost one of them because of mid-game mistakes, but as far as the mid-lane control they will have with Rek'Sai and Shogath is immense. Absolutely. As the teams take to the rift, be sure to share your predictions. Tweet hashtag FNCWin or hashtag TSMWin to at LOL Esports, and we'll check out who you think will be victorious once we are on the rift. Compositions are locked in. Very different things here coming from Fnatic, Yellowstar, and his rookies that he's brought to the title for Europe, now against the NA LCS champs. Well, one thing that I definitely want to keep my eyes on is Steelback and Yellowstar as we load onto this rift with that tanky, beefy, bruiser yeah. duo lane. If they find the 2v2, Steelback has traditionally been incredibly weak in the laning phase, but he cleans up the fights as the mid uh, game rolls around. I want to see how they handle themselves against the hometown heroes. It's going to be something difficult. You think of Urgot, and you're going to have to clean up from being right in the pit of the fight, in the heat of the fire. We'll see how Fnatic works this one out as we start off our first game in the midseason Invitational. We'll see where the bar is set. Yeah, have to talk about the Urgot Nautilus lane. As far as an actual 2v2 lane, mm -hmm. that is an absolutely devastating combination because since Nautilus has the root on his basic attack, it is absolutely devastating if he, you have to respect every single movement that Nautilus has in the laning phase right. if you want a chance at staying alive. Luckily for TSM, they have kind of been the masters of lane swaps in the playoffs. Every game in the finals against Cloud9, TSM won the early lane swap game. So they should be looking to swap this unless they've decided that they're mm -hmm. okay in the laning phase and they want to throw a curveball at Fnatic for some reason. Almost every single game TSM does a lane swap, yeah. they find an experience and gold advantage over their opponents. But this game looks like they might be playing the Dragon Control normal lane phase game because they're not even looking for deep wards, jungle right. denial, any of the tomfoolery they were pulling in the NA playoffs, this is a standard start from yeah, TSM. Yeah, lane phase, even more. We've seen recently LeBlanc's picking up all these consumables. Faker did it game five against GE Tiger here. Again, Febivin's going to do it. Not a lot of pressure with drinking all that in your lane. So more lane phase. No, this is this is super dangerous for Team Solomid right now. They are not starting a jungle camp. It is completely on Lust Boy to disrupt these Krugs if TSM doesn't want a pretty big disadvantage early on. They take one small one, and Lust Boy, he can't really do much right here. Oh, I do see that trading back and forth, seal back, and start gonna get this 2v2. You know, we were touching on the warding stats between the respective supports, and. Yellowstar has always been a vision control roaming mid. Something he does fairly often is goes and spends some time in that middle lane to help Febivin get uh, uh, get an advantage. And considering the matchup into the Cho'Gath with no escapes and the fact that Febivin's not an assassin, we'll see if he can do it as well. Really early cheese right here by Rainover because he's done one camp straight to a mid lane gang. This is what other teams do. And there goes Bjergsen. Straight up Bjergsen forcing the flash, a rinse and repeat for sure. Once they get more levels on Febivin, Rainover will surely return to that lane. How many games have we seen in the North American LCS where Lustboy or Santorin do an early gank on a Bjergsen? Fnatic flips it around right here. And this is also why TSM doesn't typically lane in the 2v2. They didn't take early experience. Steelback and Yellowstar get the early level two. Right. Wild Turtle and Lustboy will be on the back foot for almost the entirety of that laning phase. And TSM flashes burned in the mid lane. This is a great start for Fnatic.
and I have to take a step back and, and look at Fnatic. We were talking about their relatively linear playstyle. Fnatic going for those early to mid game, fairly almost predictable team compositions, and they surprise everybody through picks and bans, and they've got a small advantage early, but let's see if they can make it count. Well, there's one thing we have seen about TSM through tournaments is they can't adapt in that game if the change is too big. They can adapt in the series, but the one game is the crush for them. I am flabbergasted that TSM didn't lane swap this matchup. You can see already off the bat, the bottom lane is pushed in, the top lane is pushed in. TSM is almost relying on Santorin to bail them out of these lanes and create ganks, but the ward coverage is already there for Fnatic. Rainover does have early game presence on Gragas, and they might be looking to take some power out of oh, Dyrus. baby, right onto Dyrus, that's first blood! And Fnatic are on the board. And that's exactly what we talked about in Picks and Bands. Rainover is an enabler for his solo laners. He very rarely ganks for Yellow Star and Steelback waiting for the mid game, and he just wants to get either Huni or Febivin ahead. That's a good start. It's just another example of why TSM should have lane swapped this matchup. We know Huni loves to aggress on the enemy top laner. Yep. We know that Rainover is a fantastic early game ganker. And we also know that TSM is great at lane swapping, but this lane game is not something that got them through the playoffs. It's not something their team composition is built to do, and they are paying for it early on in this game. Really nicely played there by Rainover as well for that top gank. You can see Santorin was mid for what could have been a counter gank, but it went towards Dyrus. Rainover touching more than one lane here, trying to get that snowball going. Nice pressure by Santorin, but nothing really needed by Fabivin to get out of that situation. TSM starting to push back in the bottom lane, but you can see what kind of re or engage, I should say, steal back and yellow star are given. Yeah, well, they were able to push this out for TSM with the ricochet spam, and steal back is having some mana issues right here, so they have a bit of control of that bottom side. But right now, Santorin has very limited map presence when mm -hmm. compared to Rainover, who's already got off that successful gank despite not even landing his body slam flash. He's coming down to push TSM off that turret. Yeah, good spell shield keeps Wild Turtle alive on the retreat after pushing that wave out. Standard lanes means we might have that delayed first dragon. Dragons, yeah. definitely something more in favor of Fnatic in terms of this matchup, and historically, and I put a bit more emphasis in controlling that objective. We'll see if they continue to do the same as the modified Hook City in Yellowstone last point. A little bit out. of harass down there. Yeah, TSM has Ooh. kind of oh. always been that team that's all right with letting dragons go, even since the times of Reginald. If it's a risk, you can pass it up a few times. Could he be more confident? Wow. What? Yeah, could you say that? But Honestly, look at what everything Turtle's going to get. Great play there by Last Boy. He knows he's shopping anyway. He saw Steelback's yeah. mana pool. He knows that Urgot wants to back for a tier right now. And he was completely free to do that. Saved a ton of CS for Wild Turtle. And that just kind of goes to show why many people respect Lost yep. Boy. Pulled the Lost One Cena. of the best supports in the world. They couldn't see him. Just, <laughs> did, just didn't work out. Well, the minions saw him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. So we're six minutes into this one. Just the first blood drawn from Fnatic as things have cooled down a little bit and just been between the lanes right now. Not too much jungler intervention other than this mid lane. Yeah, and so something that you have to highlight. We're looking at those monsters of the mid lane stats. And again, since 5.5 yep. has come in, Febivin is actually traditionally down a CS at 10 and still down CS at 20. The numbers, let's just look at the 20 minutes. Febivin traditionally six CS down. Bjergsen traditionally 20 CS up when you get to that 20 minute mark. That is a scary, scary landing presence, but we'll Operation have to Operation Kill Dyrus right here. Oh, Kill Dyrus once again. He's been to this dance before though. We've seen Dyrus go down a lot. Will it be what gives Fnatic the game? Solo kill right there. Rainover didn't That's true. lay a finger on Dyrus's Gnar right there. All those top lane bans are really benefiting Fnatic in the long run right here. That's a really you good point. You do have to say, Bjergsen and Turtle are holding their own in that lane, but the pressure between Huni and Rainover is just crushing Dyrus in that normal matchup that he's having up top lane. I say normal because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It, top lane Cassiopeia is not something we see often in the competitive scene. It really makes sense with the way they're working it, though. If Febben's going to go with all these consumables and Huni's going to be the one with the, the Doran's ring, why not start to feed him? Because he's the top carry anyways. Yeah, and you know, something that Huni, I want to see what he does with the teleport ganks. A big reason why Fnatic tends to get ahead and play the mid game very well mm -hmm. is thanks to Huni's involvement in the solo or in the duo lanes, or more importantly around the dragon fights. Cassio is not your traditional TP alt to win teamfight champion. No, he's so yeah. reliant on positioning. So we need to see how Huni is going to impact once we start getting closer to those teleport moments, which you feel are going to start building up now that everyone has access to their ultimates in a moment or two. 
Things are calming down for the time being. Fnatic does have a few good wards placed, but those are also mirrored by the same ones on the bottom of the map here by Team Solomid. Yellow Star and Lost Boy haven't had too much of a chance to get out of lane, so we won't see too many of those wards just yet. Lost Boy misses, but Yellow Star connects here, and they have great focus on the trade for just Lost Boy. The ricochet from Turtle is going to push the minion wave and give him a bit of an advantage. Yeah, TSM's been able to play this lane quite well, uh, keeping the lane shoving from Wild Turtle. A yeah. lot of that is actually attributed just to the minion control of Lost Boy early on in the lane phase, uh, and the amount of aggro he is taking from Steelback and running him out of mana quite easily to prevent the all-ins. There's also a large gold lead developing in the mid lane. It's about 350 gold advantage for Bjergsen over Febeven. And it's, it is the focus of TSM typically, the mid lane and bottom lane focus, and it's more of a survival for the top lane right now in this early game. That's where 100% of Fnatic's kills have come. Could be one more here. Rainover tries to watch come out. in, pops back. Bjergsen doesn't have much mana. That flash is down, and he's going to try to fight this one out. Hits Febben with the silence. Is that what keeps him alive? No, it does not. The double distortion. Febben picking it up. Yeah, just a nicely timed gank there by Rainover. He knew that Bjergsen was pushed up in the lane, and uncharacteristically, TSM has no backup for the mid lane. A 5 to 10 second series of events in that mid lane with no backup for Bjergsen. Take him down easily, and action in the bottom. Oh, take a look at this. Steelback's trying to get in. We do see the Death Sentence Ooh. connect. The hyperkinetic position reverser is on cooldown, so... Steelback and Yellowstar using that one to initiate. They trade it for both ultimates and the flash on TSM side, regaining control of that lane. That depth charge is still up. They have to be careful for the engage down there. Huni now with an advantage in this lane. Not even in Meganar form can Dyrus oh. think about fighting. Actually misses the ultimate there. Like you said, not really much of an engage ult. He's gotta gotta wait on it. Yeah, last time he was able to land out of the turret. This time Dyrus dodges out, but it's mm -hmm. not like he's having a good time in this no. lane. Anyways, down 26 CS. I do want to talk a little bit more about the overall team compositions right here and how critical it was for Febeven to get that kill in the mid lane. Because if he does not snowball ahead of Bjergsen before Bjergsen can tank up, he won't have targets here. And again, the focus on the mid lane. That's that depth charge that was left up. Santorin trying to get something back, but he's not even going to be able to scratch either Febeven or Yellowstar. And there's the roam that we talked about 10 minutes ago. When there's an opportunity, Yellowstar will go to help Febeven out. And you can see the priority for Fnatic, getting the kills and the advantages on their damage-dealing solo laners. And, you know, Rainover's Gragas, it's what helped Fnatic do so well in the finals against Unicorns of Luck over in Europe. And he's had a phenomenal start here at the mid-season Invitational. Great First job turn. there. Fnatic doing everything they need to do to equalize that CS in the mid lane we were talking about, where Bjergsen has a huge lead. Now they've equaled that up, and first turret going down in the top lane. Huni is just having the, the lane of his life and has the wards to keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely crushing Dyrus. And right now, this game is Fnatic's style of game. Yeah. And TSM is trying to play that. When we're coming into this, the strengths of TSM was strategic early game, lane swapping, jungle denial, mm -hmm. and then pick game with vision control. That's what they are good at because then they can rotate their support and jungler through mid lane frequently and create that type of mid lane focus for them. Now in this standard laning phase, especially when the top lane is requiring so much assistance if they wanted to help him out, right. TSM is completely on the back foot. Fnatic is beating them to almost every move in the mid lane. The pressure is not accumulating enough in the side lanes, and this is the mid-game snowball that Fnatic made their bank on during the regular season, and it's happening to TSM. There may be no coming back from this 12-minute deficit. And the next step in Fnatic's playbook and style book is force team fights around Dragon. The moment they unlock one of their lanes mm -hmm. in terms of getting that outer tower down, they instantly start setting up Dragon Control. Look at all the members of Fnatic trying to get vision, and with the lead they have on both Bjergs, uh, Febben and Huni, th they want to look for fights. It's not really yeah. about getting the dragon or starting the five-drink counter. It's about getting the kills, getting the engages, because that's what Fnatic likes to do. They like to brawl. And you can see how much TSM actually want this first dragon. It's one they usually give away, even the first two. And they're going to go ahead and stick with it, this time against Fnatic. Usually Team Solo Mid will get their gold leads by yeah. giving up the Dragon and having the lane swap go in their favor and other things on the map, but not this time. Not this time. They just had to give that Dragon up because TSM has lost control of the match. 
They normally have a gold lead from the lane swapping yeah. and experience advantages, and the other team takes a dragon as a byproduct of those moves. But this time, Fnatic has just been beating TSM up across the map, and that's why the dragon was lost. Look at the pink board control, and look at the lanes right now for Fnatic. And if we step back and think about what the analyst desk was saying leading into this matchup, Crumbs specifically highlighted if Fnatic can beat up TSM in the lanes, with the assistance of Reyna, of course, let's, let's be fair about Absolutely. this. That is how um, Crumbs felt Fnatic was going to win this game. They've done everything. Each of the lanes is going in their favor. I mean, yeah, it's even in the duo. Let's uh, not discount Wild Turtle and Lustboy dealing with that bully of a lane. But Fnatic, <laughs> they've earned the lead through some very positive, proactive, aggressive plays. Let's see if TSM can start to gain a little bit of ground here. Definitely backs against the wall, as Jat was saying. Bjergsen able to keep that CS in the mid lane up, but he has to get big soon. 0-2 is not going to make him play like he did against Cloud9 in the finals of the North American LCS. Fnatic with a good lead on the game here, and Hooney's going to be start taking that blue. Not Febivant. Uh, not this time around. Febivant. Or maybe Febivant. Uh, okay, so <laughs> they make me a liar. To be a jungler here. With two AP, <laughs> Just nice guy Hooney, right? He's huggable. Why not? Someone's got to get it. Someone's got to get that blue buff in here. And this, this game right now, we need to start looking at what are Fnatic's next moves for winning this game. Because already Hooney's been able to take that top lane turret. And you mentioned them having two APs. They're trying to control oh. both blue buffs. Once again, You're successfully, a complete lack of vision control from TSM right there. Rainover walks up. Barrels over the wall and easily hands off the blue to himself, preventing the TSM blue handoff entirely. This is going to be really tough for TSM to come back from, only because Fnatic has so much lane control and they're winning the vision battle as well. And that's that's what gets me. They're only on single sight stone right now and somehow still getting themselves in the jungle. Now on to Lust Boy. They've thrown him back with the barrel into Feb of his waiting hands. 5-0. Europe take the second tower, and I'm sorry, my North American comrades, but <laughs> Fnatic have landed in Tallahassee. They absolutely have, and they are making it seem like oh TSM boy. is jet lag, which they clearly are. Bjergsen in the oh, mid lane gets cut as well. they're going to eat him up. Hooney picks up another one. 2-0-1. Santorin is going to need the ultimate from Wild Turtle just to get out safely. Now look at the pressure. Fnatic have lost the minions, but they're still looking for the tower. Teleport comes in oh. from Adiris, and that's going to dissuade Fnatic for the time being. He just lost so much pressure up there. Dyrus could have been pressuring the top lane turret, but now TSM is playing catch up, yet only making it fall, have them fall farther behind right here. The lanes are collapsing on the sides. The mid lane has been lost. The roam game is on for Fnatic, and this is yeah. turning into a slaughter. And there's something very scary. The fact that Centaurin picked this relatively early to mid game jungler has had no impact in the laning phase whatsoever. Rain over 103. You can argue will outscale this rec site. And the yeah. fact that Hooney's in Absolutely. such a great position. Fnatic have got all the tools they need to completely grab control. The one thing Fnatic cannot afford to do, though, is have mixed decisions when they push the mid to late game. If anybody remembers back to how they played against Unicorns of Love, Fnatic locks both of their matchups to Unicorns of Love thanks to poor decision making to, in, in trying to close the game out. We'll need to see if Fnatic can close with this very new unstage tested team composition. Unstage tested team comp, but definitely stage tested. If you were to think the rookies would get scared, that would have been in Madrid, right? Huge crowd for them to play in front. We've heard a lot of players get nerves in front of those big crowds. Not these guys. They know exactly what they need to do. And Yellow Star is helping to call those shots. A missed initiation there, but one of the first for Fnatic. Yeah, but you can see the focus. No dragon available. Outer towers down. Fnatic are just pitching their tents and wards in the yep. middle lane. They want that last outer turret, and then they want to take control of the jungle. They're onto this uh, turret now, but good wave clear from Wild Turtle. And Lust Boy, he's looking for blood. Not going to find it this time. Yeah, and there's actually not many ways TSM can deal with him right now, but Rainover is caught out a little bit. Dyrus trying to make a Meganar impact, but now it goes they for the fight. They don't have the vision to keep following, though, and they all try to disengage. What an ultimate from Hooney to keep two in place. TSM trying to re-engage. They're doing good damage to the health bars. They get steel back where they want him, and Yellowstar is still trying to fight it. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication, but it looks like they're going to back off as Febivan dives in for one last save. That was a 4v5 from Fnatic's perspective, and they still tried to go. They lose one, but now we have to see if they can gain a pressure advantage with many TSM members recall. Yeah, it looks like they do get the tower. Febivan not able to get any burst down, and I think, crucially, Wild Turtle flashed away, but the tower still stands, Jack. 
But for how long? Is but for how question. long, indeed. He's, whoa! <laughs> Turret, <laughs> success. Turret success. Three turrets to zero right now. Something that is very hard to come back from. If there was any questions about Fevervin's ability to make plays or make decisions on the big stage, on the international stage, with the help of Rain over in the laning phase and that super cheeky tower kill, Fevervin's in his elements. Yeah, and looking at this more. fight again. So Rainover had to burn a lot of cooldowns just to begin this fight, but the confidence of Fnatic, specifically Huni, knows he's incredibly strong. And now he goes for the flash Ooh. alt and gets a good amount of damage down. If not for that Meganar stun from Darius onto Huni, that would have been a dead turtle, probably with one more E from the Cassiopeia. At that point, the peel from Lust Boy is actually very good. The box covers that entire choke point. TSM yeah. is barely able to come back with their lives. If another fight like that happens, I feel like Fnatic gets it. Most things went pretty optimally for TSM. Yeah, and of course, with the second Dragon, Fnatic have actually never lost a game after securing the first two consecutive Dragons. They are 9-0 and oh after grabbing those first two. Now, TSM, after giving up the first two, have actually won 44% of their yeah. matches. So, it's not a huge amount. You're looking 5-4, and four, but the fact is, they have bounced back. TSM, a team that have given up Dragons in the past, yeah. to pull it back, but this, this may be too much to pull back from. The pattern of those games for Team Solomid when they're doing that is they have a lot of map control and pressure plus laning advantages. Yeah. We look at this and they're down in CS in the three major lanes. The only CS advantage they have is a six CS lead by Santorin in the jungle. That doesn't even count in the context of this matchup. Finally, Dyrus was able to equalize a turret, which helps a little bit. So, what, what each team needs to do here, for TSM, they need Dyrus to have an impact with Meganar of some kind. So much of this game has been Dyrus farming on his side of the map against yeah. Huni's Cassiope, which has been completely dominant. If Dyrus can find a teleport in where he transforms Mega as the fight begins and gets a good stun, that is a way TSM could take out priority targets. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, Fnatic has all of the vision control. They're looking for the picks with Steelback and Yellow Star, plus a Cassiopeia. I mean, that entire team just screams, kill one or two dudes right away, and then steamroll the rest of the fight. So Fnatic with different picks, but the same execution pattern. They really, really just want to look to get somebody down, and as soon as you have the numbers advantage, play for those objectives. But they snuck a lot of damage on the Nanotaur moving around the map. They're trying to move through the jungle, to get access to the next wave of turrets on TSM side. Credit to the Fnatic coaching staff for finding a new subset of champions here yeah. for Huni in the top lane that still allows them to play their same style. And they must be so happy right now that TSM decided not to lane swap because this is what <laughs> Fnatic loves to do. It's Huni gets to farm for free, no denial, no weird stuff happening in their own jungle. This one's been easy for Fnatic. And the one thing that, you know, everybody backstage, all of the casters were debating where is the priority on bans? The yeah. focus was obviously going to be top lane, but we didn't expect six of them to go that way. And I think for Fnatic, you've also got to look at the fact, yes, Huni may be the superstar at the moment, but Reign over Greg is better than LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. It's not fake as LeBlanc, but he's still delivering. You have to start looking at some of those threats and try to find out answers to those, those picks as well. And that's kind of been what everybody's said about the top lane in general in their picks is that's kind of the most mismatched here in these lanes. So why not throw everything at it? Huni's been one to go on to more diverse champions anyway, so they knew they were going to get an upper hand there on Dyrus and then focus it over and over again. Right now, look at the ward coverage that Fnatic's been able to accumulate on this side of the map. It's great vision denial right here. So they yep. will start the 22 minute Baron. Unfortunately, they weren't setting up a pick, but they just get it because TSM can't make the rotation in time. What a call. Fantastic, fantastic play in Fnatic. They now that Baron died so fast, guys, because of Rooney's Cassiopeia just ripping through it. Much faster than TSM expected it to be, and then Dyrus could scout with the boomerang, but he didn't have he didn't have anything to place inside of it right now. No upgraded sight totems right there for TSM, but a double upgraded yellow trinket for Fnatic. Vision control and side of Fnatic. <laughs> Death charge a little far, the flash, anchor toss. Wild Turtle's gonna have to spell shield now and use his ultimate to get out of this one. But that's gonna hurt. They may get pressure here. Fnatic pushing down the mid. We'll see if they can use those Baron empowered minions to get up into that's those towers far, though. for Fnatic. 
What did they expend? Flash on Febivan, flash and engage tools from Yellowstar, but look at that burst onto Lust Boy. Again, Dyrus is trapped trying to push out the top lane. Fnatic pushes that so quickly yeah. and easily that now they have position on multiple fronts. Huni gets the Baron minions in the bottom lane. Fnatic is still holding strong with four in the mid lane. They don't have great turret siege because of the Urgot. That is why Fnatic is split pushing right now. And they're gonna have to be careful. They know Dyrus is about to Mega Nar out, so they will not initially want this fight. Huni, so much pressure on the bottom and every member of Team Solo mid in the mid lane right now. This is perfect right now for Fnatic. They know how to get the outer turrets without a traditional AD carry right there. It's by splitting it's and incredible. using your strong members on the side lanes. And on top of that, there are a number of European top laners who were playing Gnar up until recent weeks. So Fnatic timing the back against that Mega Gnar. It's not an uncomfortable uh, opponent champion for them. No. They get the mid in a turret. And look at the damage on Dyrus. Fnatic could set up on this bottom lane next as well. This just feels abusive right now. Huni is completely dominating Dyrus this entire game, and now he's dictating the map for Fnatic as well. European rookie of the split really showing up here at the international event. Look at that. They're going to kill him. Oh! oh flash explosive cast. You can see how headstrong Fnatic are right now. Really no care in the world against this TSM composition now that they're in their base. They do have that one pushing onto the inhibitor on that bottom lane. TSM are scrambling to defend, but the, without the wave clear of Wild Turtle, there's nothing they can do. This is how you use the Baron buff. We knew these teams were in an arm race for mid-game power, and Fnatic has won this arm race. Dyrus trying to get an ultimate off. They have no Sivir right now. They don't have much of anything to do in this fight. Huni goes down only because he pushes too far, but you can see Fnatic low on mana. They have health, and that's enough for him to just kind of hang out. They will finally pull back, though, without any minions on that Baron buff. All right, Huni was being a little foolish right there. <laughs> that, was, that was a reach too far, but he so, just wanted some hugs. So many of Fnatic's reaches this game have worked out perfectly well. Almost every move Fnatic has made has paid off totally. This is now a 25-minute game with an 8,000 gold lead. That's incredible. A downed inhibitor inside TSM base. And guys, this means more than just EU greater than NA in that conversation. Let's watch this real quick again. Huni went for the kill, but oh. he flashed face first into a death sentence. So not the best execution right there. Credit for Lust Boy to having that hook prime. Uh, outside of that, it actually allows TSM to come out of the base and maybe pick up a drag. Well played by TSM taking advantage of that. Their first will uh, stall out that five dragon counter. But they've got so much more problems to deal with than that one at the moment. Yeah, there's no way this game... Well, th there is a way, but it's very <laughs> unlikely that this game goes to five dragons. Something I'm definitely watching for for Fnatic is that game they had a 20,000 gold lead against Unicorns of Love. They wanted to play safe. They need to end this game. Well, we do see Feather than pulling the attention of TSM while the rest of the team pushing in the mid lane. Keep an eye on Yellowstar. He's also picked up that Banner of Command after Sightstone. You've got that empowered minion on the middle lane of Febivan, again, just trying to keep everybody away. All the clever ways of pushing down these inhibitor turrets without a real AD carry right there. Ban your minion for more time, split pushing with the Baron minions, and now two inhibitors down, 26 minutes in. Do we see a fight? Oh, Lust Whoa. Boy absolutely and surgically deleted from the map. This is gonna be Wild Turtle now. He tries to get himself out, but there's not enough spell shield to save his life on that one. Two going in for Febaven, and they're looking for the Nexus turret. So carry on pushing through. They find another one onto Santorum Bjergsen in full retreat. He takes the fat man down, but gets taken down himself. Holo 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 is killed under the Nexus turrets as Fnatic get the minion wave pouring through. They're onto Nexus turret. Now Number one, Dyrus has Mega Gnar charging up, but it's not going to be enough to finish it out. He does get the double Gnar onto the wall, and now Dyrus' attention. The wallop isn't going to be enough, but is there enough HP after that with Lust Boy coming out now, misses the hook on Steel back. They're going to have to retreat, but the damage has already been done. One more rinse and repeat, and this should be game one. This North American heavy crowd in Tallahassee is silenced right now <laughs> by the precision of Fnatic's chaotic gameplay right here. This is incredible by Fnatic right now in order to take so many objectives and so much power early on. And this composition doesn't do this all game. They definitely had to make this work immediately, and it has not failed in any any spot. Somebody needs to give Rain over a cookie for his ganks in the laning phase, <laughs> then Huni a hug for his fantastic performance in Cassiopeia after six top lane bans. And you need to take a step back. A lot of people had written Fnatic off coming into this tournament. A lot of people had said, Fnatic style, it's sloppy, it's messy, it's not good enough. Yeah. 27 minutes in, a Nexus turret and two inhibitors down from TSM. Fnatic, say otherwise. And it's only the first game of the group stage, but we want to talk about the bracket stage already because we were thinking <laughs> there was 
a lot of wisdom around this tournament was thinking Fnatic was going to be competing with AHQ for that fourth spot into the bracket stage. It was like EDG, SKT, and TSM were the ones going in. Yeah, here comes TSM off Katowice. Yeah, winning right there. The European teams that went to IM Katowice had a horrendous showing. Right. The finals in the European LCS looked incredibly chaotic, and obviously this is just one game, but it absolutely begins a whole new conversation yeah. about this midseason invitation. Especially because this is Fnatic's style. Regardless of the champions, they've played in the same way and the same manner they have in the European LCS. But TSM have not. Picks and bans different, not lane swapping, decision making early. It's kind of, Fnatic did them, they've done what they always do, and TSM, you have to ask some questions. They've been even cheeky enough to find Bjergsen uh. in the bush. The Death Sentence connects! They're trying to use the Fnatic brush against Fnatic! That doesn't work! They go on to Bjergsen, he's gonna get locked down, and they are just surveying the fight now. Who's next? No worries, Dyrus is gonna be it, and this is when they have the Meganar. Nobody else can actually follow up, and we're gonna see this second tier turret going down. Steelback continues to push through, and Fnatic set their sights on the last remaining inhibitor turrets. There are two downed inhibitors already, so normally Fnatic would just have to wait for those to push in, but they've already killed two people on TSM, this third inhibitor is free. Definitely sealing the deal as they turn TSM's base into shambles. They're looking for that last inhibitor. They just want to go around the horn and take everything because they have absolutely earned it this game. And look at them backing off. This is again what we talked about. When Fnatic was overconfident Super safety. and pushed Nexuses against the Unicorns of Love, yeah. it backfired multiple times. Yellowstar was playing Nautilus, <laughs> trying to backdoor, and it didn't work out. It's very good to see, because this is some growth <laughs> that Fnatic <laughs> did not demonstrate during right. the regular splits. We can call it growth. I think they could have ended this game easily right there, but they're going to go for the Baron. <laughs> Let's take the 110% certain Damn victory. it, Jad, I am proud of them. They are showing restraint. They did it. And All control, right. <laughs> because Fnatic had not all spring long. Maybe the Baron is a little over the top, but you know what? I'm, I'm still on board. I, I dig it. Yeah, this next push, they've gone back to base. They're even buying elixirs to go with this Baron. They can Banner of Command to Siege Minion already. There's only one Nexus turret living for Team Solo mid. There's seven camps, one Scuttle they got to take first as well before they get into the base. The Dragon's up they're in a minute go 15. For the Dragon. <laughs> Here's the Scuttle, so they got, they're going to get Scuttle down. No worries on that. A very, very methodical play hang here on by second, Fnatic. Hang on a second. Are, are, are the North American classes a little salty that Fnatic are beating TSM? So convinced. I'm not so This is an amazing game. Absolutely not. <laughs> You're pulling salt out of thin air right here, Trevor, because <laughs> this is Fnatic displaying their play style working on the international stage. I do have to say, though, TSM is not playing their game yeah. whatsoever. No way. This is a com It's an incredibly uncharacteristic style for TSM to open a game. The top lane bans have heavily affected Dyrus. Santorin is playing a jungler he has not had much success on in Rek'Sai, especially in the Cinderhawk patch. 0-2 on that champion. Don't know why they wouldn't have gone with Sejuani. Don't know why TSM wouldn't lane swap. They're flabbergasted, though, by this Fnatic team early on because it does not look like they know how to deal with the Fnatic play style. Maybe TSM overthought themselves or overprepped themselves because this is going to be their defeat. Definitely looks like it's going to be soon, just waiting for the mid inhibitor to come back up. But this is now giving TSM more chances to fight. And you can see how safe Fnatic's playing it, staying in that death ball, making sure they get everything they want before they make the final push. Looks like this might be it. There's one tower standing between Fnatic and their first win here at midseason. Dyrus goes in, Megan Nall is about to pop, but he hasn't managed to Ooh. find a target yet. We do see the uh, ultimate throwing down for Wild Turtle. They've killed oh. Bjergsen! Bjergsen goes down, Febivin with the turret, and then the kill onto Bjergsen. He had a great mid lane against what they thought was going to be an unmatchable set for the mid lane champions here. And Fnatic will take game one over TSM at the midseason Invitational. Chat, you said it a few minutes ago. Local audience stunned Absolutely. by that performance. Our letters may be NA, but we're not made of salt, Trevor. Fnatic, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I did not actually expect that. I think I everybody think had reservations. I, but I don't what think a many performance. People, many people would not expect this because there were some very surprising things about this game. The six top lane bands, the top lane oh Cassiopeia from Huni, the underwhelming Nar from Dyrus, the fact that Febovin and the rest of Fnatic made their team the solo mid team here by repeated gigs in the mid lane, completely shutting the rest of